Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of This Studio. My name is Adam, and today is going to be yet another Technique Talk. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Luke Uyamura and Leo Palacios. Thank you so much for your support. And today's featured studio artist is Peter Goshax. Thank you so much, Peter, for joining the studio artist team. And if you'd like to become a studio artist or studio VIP, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Adam Tan, or you can click over here. A lot of you guys have been asking me for videos about practice and learning marimba music quickly and all that kind of stuff when you're preparing for a performance. So I thought today's video would be very suitable for that because I'm actually preparing for my recitals later in November. Now if you guys didn't already know, my recital project is called Marimba Dreams and it consists of two performances. It was one before but now we have two. One of them is in Hong Kong on the 5th of November 2017 at the Pass Hong Kong Days of Percussion 2017. So if if you're gonna be in Pass Hong Kong, let me know cause we'll be there. And on the 19th of November 2017, I'm gonna be having the actual recital event, a duo recital event at the UWA School of Music, that's right, my home turf. And I'm calling this recital our recital because it's gonna be with my friend Therese from Melbourne, who is originally from Hong Kong, and she won the 2017 Australian Marimba competition. She came as a semi-finalist in 2016 Pass Italy. If you wanna check out Therese's channel, it's in the description below, or you can click over here. She has a lot of cool Marimba solos uploaded and of course this recital is going to be live streamed to this channel right here so make sure you hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads but also to know when this live stream is happening and of course I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsors that have already signed up to support us with the Marimba Dreams event that is the University of Western Australia Marimba One and Edition Spitzer thank you so much for your support anyway enough plugging I want to get back to the video bring it down a little bit which is learning marimba solos and you guys know that I play marimba 95 percent of the time it is my favorite instrument I have a marimba in the studio I really struggled with learning and practicing marimba music in the last few years I did three recitals in the last year one for my undergrad one for my honors and one for my master's degree and all of these recitals had a very common theme I rushed a lot of the preparation for it <laughs> I'll be the first to admit that I wasn't 100% happy with any of those three recitals because I made a lot of mistakes that could have been avoided if I used a process like the process I'm gonna talk about in this video. So to go against the trend of my last three recitals, which were all about rushing the pieces and learning them as fast as possible in a short time, not necessarily getting them right, this process that I'm going to tell you about today is about doing things slowly. If you just rush it and you just play like a wish-wash version of whatever piece you want to play, it just sucks and you feel bad playing it and you can't enjoy yourself. And honestly, that is what marimba playing should be about. It should be about sharing your ideas, your emotions, your expressing your inner feelings on the instrument to the audience. And you can't do that if you don't know the notes. So I've done a Rob Nopper and I've made a PDF of this process and if you would like to skip this video entirely and just read it on a sheet, that's not gonna work. You can get it at adamtanpercussion.com forward slash download. It's going to be at the bottom underneath where my new piece is. It's one of the PDFs there called How to Learn and Practice a Marimba Solo. But anyway, I've boiled down my process of learning and practicing a marimba solo into three stages and 18 steps, which sounds like a lot, but actually it goes by pretty quickly. Stage one is called analysis. I would refer to it as self-study because it is done without the instrument. It is everything you do before it. Stage two is called practice and basically 85% of the work you're going to be doing in this entire process is going to be on this one stage of practice. And stage three is called performance. It's everything you do once you've learned the notes, once you have a sound understanding of the piece, it's what you do to keep it fresh and to keep it polished in time for the performance. So I'm going to go through all of the steps one by one with you guys and honestly I promise you it's not as hard as it sounds, it's not as grueling or tricky as it sounds, it just takes time. So let's begin with stage one, analysis. So for this whole video, we're going to assume that you're learning a marimba solo for maybe a jury or a recital or an audition or something like that. And you need to prepare for it. It might take days, it might take weeks, it might take months, depending on the difficulty level. But that is what we're going to assume. And for my example, I'm going to use Over the Rainbow, Robo Tomo's arrangement, because I learned this in four hours because I wanted to challenge myself. And I use this exact same process to do that. So step one of the analysis stage is to learn a bit about the piece. 
This happens when the only thing you know of the piece is the title and the composer and you don't have the score, you don't have any of that, you haven't bought it yet, you haven't downloaded it yet, you haven't done anything, you just know the name of the piece. So learn a little bit about it. So make sure you know who the composer is, where they're from, why they wrote the piece, why the piece is called the title, who plays the piece regularly, who plays it best, who is like the agreed best version, what kind of difficulty level people consider it to be, what kind of mallets people use for it, all that sort of extraneous extra musical stuff. Learn about all of those facts first so you have a bit of background information. This sounds like common knowledge but literally a lot of people when I ask them about their piece they don't know who the person is who composed it, like they don't know anything about them, they don't know why the piece is called what it is, they don't have any idea about any of that which makes it very hard to make an interpretation about the piece that isn't just about the notes. So if you want to have a full musical experience make sure you know about the background. Once you've learned a bit about the piece, it's time to move on to step two, which is to watch a video or listen to a recording of the piece. But only once. Watch or listen once. Now this step is debatable. I know a lot of people say, oh Adam, I don't really want to listen to a recording because it will spoil my interpretation. I'll start copying them then and then and then. And I know a lot of professional players who do this who prefer not to listen to the piece first. That is totally okay. But my reasoning for watching a video of the piece first just once before I actually start getting into it is so that I just know what it sounds like, what it looks like. I know what performers do in certain areas of it. For example, if they always leave a gap in this particular area, maybe I'll choose to do that, maybe I won't. But everyone is different so you might want to skip this step if you prefer to not have any sort of prior knowledge of the piece. But if you do want to do this step, make sure you try and watch a video because watching a video will give you the visual feedback as well as the auditory feedback which is something very important in marimba playing. Honestly, these days we have YouTube and everyone is uploading solos all the time. All the well-known solos have like 50 or 60 versions of it on YouTube so it's not hard to find a video of it. But make sure you only watch it once because you still don't have the score at this point, you still don't have any of the music, so watching it any more than once is kind of a waste of time. Just watch it once. Okay, so now we're gonna assume that you've just received the score and whether that's in PDF form or hard copy form, you have the score in your hands right now, right in front of you, so we can move on to step three which is to visually analyze the score. So when I do this visual analysis, I usually ditch the video, I ditch the recording, And literally when I say visual analysis, I mean I literally pick up the score and I open it and I just look at it. Like literally no pens, no stationery, no highlighters, no fancy tricks, just read the score. So take note of the stuff that is on the paper. For example, the terminology, if they use Italian terminology, there might be a reason for that. Like I know Rob used Italian terminology because he's going for that classical romantic influence. It wouldn't quite make sense to use English terminology. But for my piece, Path, I use English terminology because it's more modern. It doesn't have much classical romantic influence. Influence. I prefer to think of it as a modern piece. One of the most important things is to notice how many pages there are. For example, Rob's piece has a total of five pages. So that tells me that you can learn this piece in a relatively short amount of time compared to something like Land, which is of equal difficulty, I think, but it's longer. There's a lot more pages, so there's a lot more to remember. Memorize the amount of bars there are on each page because that will give you a visual indicator of your progress. And the more familiar you are with where certain bars are on what page, the more familiar you'll be of the structure and you'll just memorize the whole thing a lot easier. Also at this point try and look for any sort of patterns or anything that is repetitive and easy and try and look for things that you think that might need more attention like more noty bits or things that are not pattern based, things that are changed very slightly. That is like my least favorite thing in marimba music is when like the patterns are almost the same but not quite. <laughs> Then you can move on to step four, which is to get the pen and paper out and write. Now everybody is different, different people value different aspects of the music, but I encourage you to just circle or highlight or draw lines wherever you think something is important. Generally speaking, structure is the first thing I would go for, but everything after that is completely up to you. And I know people who use like highlighters and like stickers and they go all out with the annotations. So you might like to do that. I personally like to just use one color, just like a pen, because I like to keep my annotations small and simple. Choose your annotations wisely and spend a bit of time on this. It'll take you maybe one hour, two hours, or it might even take you like 10 minutes if the piece is really short. Okay, so once you've printed out the score, you've done the written analysis, it's all annotated and ready to go. The final step of the analysis stage is step five, which is to watch the video again. But this time you're gonna watch it with the score in front of you and you're allowed to listen to it as many times as you want this time. Not just once, but as many times as you feel like you need to, to understand. And of course you might only listen to it once, but during this time, 
time, you want to go through the score as the video is playing and to check and see, are there any sections you don't understand? Are there any sections that you are unsure of how to execute? Well, then you can watch the video and see how that person is doing it and that might be one way of doing it. And once you've completed annotating the score and listening to the piece, this whole process would have taken you maybe about three hours total maximum. And once you've done all of that, you'll have a very sound understanding of the structure. You'll know exactly how much work needs to be done. You can give yourself a pretty accurate time estimation on how long it'll take you to finish. You basically know a lot more about the piece. Okay, so this entire time you haven't touched the marimba, you haven't touched mallet, you haven't even played anything yet. So now we get to play in stage two, practice. So now you can take your annotated score and your knowledge of the piece over to the marimba and do step number one, which is to play through the piece badly. This is my favorite section of the entire process because all you have to do is just play through the whole piece very slowly, very badly, let yourself make mistakes, let yourself play lots of wrong notes. Practice is the time to play wrong notes because if your practice sounds good at the very beginning, something is wrong. Practice is meant to sound bad, so enjoy playing badly, play through the whole piece in a very haphazard fashion, as in try everything, try all the techniques, try passages, you might even get some of them right on the first go, who knows? So previously when you were listening to the piece or watching the piece on video and annotating the score, you may not have realized that that lateral section you were looking at is actually a lot easier in practice than it is on the score. But once you have played through the whole piece badly, you will have a better kinesthetic memory of the piece, which means you will allocate your time more wisely. Okay, now that we're done with the fun part, we need to start getting down to business, which is step two, work on a small section without a metronome. Now I use the term small section, not bar, not phrase, because all of these things depend on the context. For example, in Over the Rainbow, a small section for me is about four bars or eight bars even, depending on how easy it is. Whereas a small section in Lemuria is one bar. Literally Lemuria, I have learned bar by bar, but Over the Rainbow, I could learn it at four bars at a time. I personally like to choose my small sections in order, like I like to do it from the beginning and build it up from there because that means I can come back and play it through from the beginning as you would in the normal performance. It might differ depending on the type of piece. You might want to start from the end, you might want to start from the middle where it's really choppy, or you might want to start in the chorus, I don't know, like you choose. But the bottom line is stick with this small section, whether it's one bar, four bars, eight bars, stick with it and work on it very, 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 very slowly without a metronome, just so you can get the notes accurate. As you're doing this, you will start to look more at the marimba and less at the score, which means you'll start to pick up on patterns that you'll see in your mallets, you'll start to pick up on things that you start seeing, and sometimes marimba composers, they like to write very conveniently, like they like to write in very convenient hand positions. And if you pick up this pattern while you're doing this step, then that will make your job a lot easier. But the most important thing is to go slow. Do not rush this step. Take all the time you need to get that accuracy. You can get 100% accuracy if you work it up like this but if you work it up from a fast speed from the beginning you will miss things you will make mistakes and it won't be good so take it slow once you're confident enough without a metronome and you can get it at a slow speed with all the right notes step three is to work on that same small section that you've chosen but with a metronome Now I know what you're thinking, Adam, what if the piece doesn't necessarily have a metronomic feel to it? What if it's like molto, 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 bartissimo? And like, honestly, Over the Rainbow is kind of like that. It's very stop start. There's a lot of pauses and there's a lot of stretching here and there. But if you play it with a metronome first when you're practicing it, you will understand the rhythms better. You will understand what speed it should be at. You will understand how fast certain flourishes need to be. So it doesn't matter if the piece is rubato or not. Play it mechanico. Play it straight with a metronome. The same idea here, take the metronome, put it on a very, very slow speed, very similar to the speed that you did in the previous step. If that's like super, super slow, Du, 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 du. then so be it because at least you're getting the rhythm right, you're getting the notes right, it's 100% accurate, the only thing is that it's just a bit slow, which we can work up. So once you can play this small section confidently at a slow tempo with the metronome, then you can move on to step four, which is to slowly bump up the speed. Now, when I say slowly bump up the speed, I mean literally bump it up in increments of five clicks or 10 clicks at a time at the most. Don't go like 50, 100, 150, 200, no. Slow, 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 slow. Literally just 
bump it up in small increments. So you might play through your four bars once at like 75, then you bump it up to 80, play it again. 85, play it again. And if bumping it up by five is too easy for you, that's fine because you're getting more opportunities to play the same passage over and over again. So you're just getting more and more familiar with it to the point where it's just second nature. So you just keep bumping it up in these small increments until you have reached the tempo that is desired or the tempo that is marked. And once you have reached that tempo, play it a couple more times at that tempo. Now, once you're confident and you have that small section at tempo with all the right notes, with the metronome on, we move on to step five, which is to memorize. Now, I know a lot of people perform marimba solos with music and that's totally fine you know like some of the best players in the world Nancy Zeltzman for example plays with music a lot of the time and she still plays beautifully but you still should memorize certain passages of it because you don't want to be looking at the music all the time when you're playing you want to be able to express you want to be able to do like gestures and movements and you want to be free you don't want to be transfixed on the music in performance because it just doesn't look right even the professionals who play with music don't look at the music 24 hours a day seven days a week unless it's something that was given to them to sight read. Try and play the section you just did with the metronome at first without the music. Just look down at the marimba and try and play it just by looking at the bars. And if you can do that, turn off the metronome. Turn off the metronome and play exactly what you just played without the metronome. This is the final step for this small section. So if you can play this section at that tempo without a metronome, without the music, you can play that section perfectly. And it's only after you've reached this stage with memorizing and without the metronome, without all those distractions that you can start to put things in like rubato, tempo changes and gestures, any sort of special interpretation features. All of those things you can slowly start to integrate now because you are confident with the notes and you can play it to the point where you don't even have to think about the music anymore. So congratulations, you've just done one small section of your piece and now in step six, it is time to repeat steps two to five for the next small section. So pick another small section and do the same thing. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, Adam, this is so laborious, it's gonna take me forever. And honestly, it's meant to be laborious. It's meant to be a little bit time consuming and a bit tiring and very long winded. But like, if it's not like that, you're not going to get the notes right. It's not gonna be accurate. And you're just gonna be worrying about things like notes when you wanna be worrying about being yourself. Outside of the percussion shed, among the, the aspen trees. But I have news for you. If the piece that you're doing is pattern based, for example, and you've just done, let's say four bars and it contains a pattern that is similar to the next small section, but the next small section has different notes or whatever, you're gonna learn the next small section a lot quicker. So let's say after a couple of hours, slash day slash week slash months depending on the piece you have learned a few of the small sections you've learned maybe about one third of the piece in small sections in this way of learning it slowly with a metronome without a metronome memorized it it's all memorized it's all good to go then you can move on to the next step step seven is to run all of the small sections you've done so far in one go so run the small sections in sequence in one go memorized and see how you go. This is kind of one of the reasons why I like to work the small sections from the beginning because then the progress is linear. So like when you're going through the piece, it's in the chronological order so that when you go back to it, it is literally what you're going to be playing on stage. So for this step, if you've learned small sections in different sections of the piece, then just play them one after another. But if you've learned it from the beginning, then just play from the beginning to where you are now. And you will see that there might be some challenges in joining the sections together. This is your chance to identify those challenges. So step eight is just to keep doing the same thing. Keep repeating steps two to five for all of the small sections after the one you already know. And then do step seven, play all of these small sections that you've just learned in one go until you have three medium sized sections instead of 25 small sections, for example. If you can get to this stage where you have done the entire piece in small sections and you can play them in big chunks, you are pretty much almost there. You're pretty much almost finished. And the only thing you have to do is step eight, which is to play the entire thing once. So you're gonna play the whole piece once, just once, just so you can see if you can join the sections together. See if there's anything you forget along the way. Like for example, I forgot some really easy sections towards the beginning because I'd just gotten so far in the piece. I was like, what is going on? But yes, if you can play the whole thing through at this stage with very little mistakes or no mistakes, like very high level of accuracy, memorized completely, then you are in a very, very good position. Congratulations, you have basically learned the piece.
Yeah! But remember, this video is called how to learn and practice a marimba solo. It's not just about learning it, which is what we've just done. We also need to practice it. But you've already done the note learning, which was in stage two, the practice stage. So now we can move on to stage three, performance. So you should not attempt stage three unless you are absolutely sure you know all the notes from stage two and you know everything about the piece from stage one, okay? Stage three is purely for polishing, for finishing off the piece and for keeping it fresh in your memory leading up to the performance. So step one is to record yourself playing the piece three times and this is one of the hardest things. This is something that not a lot of people do. Self-recording, as my friend Rob Nopper always says, is one of the most important things you can do. Dude, you're an inspiring man. For any sort of preparation, whether it's for audition, for recital, whatever, self-recording is super important because it keeps you accountable by putting pressure on you. You need pressure because in the performance, you have all these other factors like nerves, people staring at you, like these will all add to the pressure. And when you're practicing by yourself, of course, there's no pressure because you know no one's listening. So choose your poison, whether it's DSLR, phone, or webcam even, like anything that records video and audio. Do not record just the audio because you won't know whether it looks any good. Remember, marimba is also a visual performance as much as it is an auditory performance. I mean, it is important to get the notes right first, of course, but people are going to be watching you play most of the time, not just listening to you. So you need something that has a visual medium. So try and record yourself playing the piece from start to finish up to three times. I say up to three times because if you give yourself too many takes, if you give yourself too many chances, as many of you guys who have done audition tapes for universities or colleges or whatever, if you give yourself too many goes, you start to take it for granted and then the recording pressure thing just sort of loses its steam. So once you've recorded yourself playing three times and you've watched the video, you can see whether you've made any mistakes. And honestly, if you've gotten this far, you probably won't make many. Then you can move on to step two, which is to bring in a live audience and ask for feedback. Now, as percussionists, as marimbists, we should always be open to feedback because criticism makes you stronger as a person, whether it's like not even just percussion stuff, whether it's like life, you don't do this very well, maybe you should try working on this. That is how you get better. If everyone tells you you're good, if everyone just pretends that everything you're doing is fantastic, you're never going to learn anything. So be open to criticism. But first, you need to bring in a live audience and a live audience can be anyone. It can be literally one person, maybe your significant other, maybe someone from your family, like your mom or dad or like your brother or sister or maybe it can be your teacher obviously your teacher would be quite up there when it comes to picking who you want to pick as your live audience so choose your live audience and ask them to give you feedback when you have finished playing the piece and they will usually give you a whole range of opinions depending on who they are I mean obviously expert opinions should always be respected like if it's a teacher with years of experience you should respect what they're saying but at the same time remember that not all opinions are correct take on board what you want to take and don't take on board what you don't necessarily want to take but listen to all of the feedback regardless of whether you think it's right or wrong and you might find that someone's feedback might point you in the right direction for something it might make something easier it might make it sound better so always keep an open mind so once you've brought in people and they've listened to you and they've given your feedback and maybe you want to do it a few more times for different groups of people once you've done all of that you have basically prepared yourself for the performance. You are almost there. You're like 95% there. So the second last step of this entire process is step three, supplementary practice. Now, when I say supplementary practice, this is not the same as the practice you were doing in stage two. You should not be worrying about notes anymore. You should not be worrying about accuracy anymore because you already have that. Just make sure that you're only fixing minor things, not major things. So things like expression or rubato, interpretation related issues. Maybe you want to bring out dynamics a little bit more. Small things like that, which are honestly probably the things that your friends would have given you feedback on. And you might want to take some of those things into account. This is your chance to put those things in and then maybe just do like a full run through of the piece. At this point, your piece should be of a very high standard. And this step just keeps on recurring over and over again until you reach the final step, step four of the performance stage, which is to perform. Guys, honestly, if you have reached this far and you've done everything that I've just talked about and you have pushed the piece up to this very high standard and you've played it in front of your friends and all that sort of stuff, then the performance will be so easy. You can just relax, you can just be yourself. And remember, this is why we play music. This is why we learn instruments. It's because we want to share ourselves with other people and not have to worry about technical barriers or issues. And if you've prepared the piece up to this point, up to this standard, you won't have to worry about any of that. So now you can just play marimba. You can just play 
and enjoy yourself. And at the end of the day, that is what it should always be about. So yes, that is my 18 step process to learning and practicing a marimba solo. And it sounds tedious, it sounds like a lot of work, but honestly, it is totally worth it. And sometimes it's not even that long. Like it honestly, it's just something that you have to do. So again, I'm gonna do another Rob Napa. And if you'd like to download the, I'm sorry Rob, my impression of you absolutely sucks. That's not gonna work. But yeah, if you'd like to download the PDF with the 18 step process on it, which has some additional supplementary notes, you can go to adamtanpercussion.com forward slash download. That link is also in the description below. Basically, this process helped me learn my pieces to a higher standard, much higher than before. I also learned my own piece like this, which sounds ironic because I wrote it myself, but I learned my own piece in small chunks also. I learned my own piece by recording myself and all that sort of stuff. Good luck with whatever performances you guys are doing. Let me know in the comments below if you're performing anywhere anytime soon. I'd love to hear what you're playing. And if you found this video to be helpful and you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it because I like to help you guys out with whatever I can give you. I know I'm not an expert, I know I'm not like a professional or anything, but I play a lot of marimba, okay? Surely that counts for something. As always, if you have any suggestions or if you want to say anything to me, just leave it in the comments below. I try to reply to all comments because I'm a bit OCD when it comes to comments. Thank you so much for watching these videos. Thank you so much for all the support. I hope you guys are doing well with uni or college or high school because I know summer is almost over. Thank you so much for everything and I will see you next week for another episode of the studio, good night.